On episode 41 of Chit Chat, we survived Origins 2019 and made it home to talk about it. Most of the games we were looking for did not disappoint us. And better yet, some games we didn't know much about really got our attention. Welcome back to Chit Chat. This is episode 41. Episode 40, we talked about our Origins preview. Episode 41, we're going to talk about, I guess, our Origins review. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, yeah. Talk about our experience it. at Origins. We just got back earlier this week. Uh, we wanted to sort of dump everything out of our brains because we had a big week of games and all sorts of stuff. So we're going to talk about that. But before we get to any of that, we're going to talk about the winner from last episode. Yes. Yeah, so we gave away subtext last week. The winner is Amanda Sprunger. Make sure you email us at manversusmeeple at gmail.com to get your game. And this week we're giving away Dulosaur Island from Pandasaurus Games. To be entered to win, just make a comment below, and bam, you're entered. All right, so we're not going to do a list, so to nope. speak. We're just going to throw up some information about the stuff we played. We may bring up some of our top five from our anticipated list if we touched on those games. I don't know if all of us did or not. I have no idea. No, I didn't get much time on the games that I was looking for. I saw a lot of games that I didn't expect to uh, yeah. like as much as I did. So, well, what was the what surprised you the most? That was not on your list, not on any of our lists. I will start. The, the thing that surprised me the most, and I had heard about this briefly, was Isle of Cats. Mm -hmm. Isle oh, of yeah. Cats. I forgot about that. Um, from, is it City of Games? Is that his company name? It is, yes. City of Games. Frank uh, ran through the pitch with it. I didn't get to play the whole thing, but he very thoroughly ran through the pitch. And his pitch, Frank, if you're watching, one of the again, one of the best Great pitches pitch. I've ever seen. He covered every single thing there is about the game. I'll tell you as best I can. This game works a lot like Bunny Kingdom. You're drafting cards. A lot of the cards are going to actually do similar things in terms of there's some end-of-game scoring cards, and then there's some cards that allow you to draft these polyominoes that are all cats. And you're, the theme is you're saving all these cats from this island, the Isle of Cats, putting them on your boat. So everyone has this big player board that's a boat with... Spaces basically it. spaces different rooms throughout it right yeah, yeah. spaces and different rooms and things that you can uh like treasure and things that you can cover up and get as you place these cats uh and you take all these cats and you basically puzzle them out into your boat round after round with the game uh looks really really charming the the artwork on the cats is uh, the kind of this weird fantasy based yeah. cat they're all weird wild colors with markings some of them have antlers the cool thing is and i don't know how many polyominoes there were and all of them have different cat art on each yeah. and every one of them, which That's I've crazy. found to be crazy. I thought it was cool because he, he went with cats because cats always are laying in some weird position. And so it kind of just worked out. Fit the out. art style. Yeah, yeah sure. fit the art style, yeah. fit the theme of the game really well. And the fact that they're going to be in these weird tiles. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was a really cool looking game. Um, yeah. The other cool thing about this game, a crazy thing, during Origins, it reached, I think, as high as number three on the hotness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Frank didn't have a booth. He was just going around, getting people's attention, sitting at tables it, yeah. where he could. It was awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, yeah, that's the thing about Origins that I really like. And if you don't go to Origins, this is the benefit. You can't do that at Gen Con. You can't do that at Essen. But not or as easily, no. Not, yeah. not really as easily at, at all. But, like, Origins, there's so many, so much space available for gaming. and Outside of the hall. Outside it's of the like hall. literally right outside. And it's more of a relaxed con for a lot of people. So you can kind of... Get time out of the hall and go see what what people are playing. Yeah. I, we saw I, when I saw it, I was just walking by after lunch, and he just had it off to the side. I was with Jeremy Howard. Uh -huh. John Bly plays games. He's like, you got to see this game. And literally, he was just playing in the cafeteria. Like it was the coolest thing. Well, my big surprise was Watergate. Uh, we both oh, fell yeah. in love. Oh yeah, Watergate just easily. Was, by the time I, this goes out, we'll I, talked about I'm it. I'm not going to gonna talk about it for ever. I'm just going to briefly mention it. It's from Capstone Games, a two-player asymmetric game. Very similar to Twilight Struggle in 1960, we have dual use cards, a tug of war type system in which one player is uh, playing Nixon trying to mm -hmm. fight uh, the informants from the newspaper. It's a really ingenious game. Go watch our review. We both fell in love with it. We actually mm -hmm. spent several of our days just evangelizing the game and introducing it to a ton of different people. Everyone it who played that liked so it. Good. Like it I didn't so hear good. anyone say anything yeah, but really so good, good things about that game yeah so it's ridiculous coming out of gen con go try it i have a list of stuff here i'll, I'll go for we'll, it we'll just go back and forth <laughs> wonderland's war really surprised me yeah we played this at our getaway um with skybound three months ago Something for like as earlier in the spring i don't remember when it was 
And at the time, it was more of an area control style game that also broke off into a worker placement game. And to be quite honest, and James will understand this, it wasn't a great game at all. And it didn't work. They went back to the drawing board and they came up with something that is a little bit of uh, Quacksalber yeah. uh, mixed into it, where you're drawing out of a bag and you're using those type things to put onto an area control board. It's also got a little bit of Glenn Moore in the fact mm -hmm. that you're moving around a rondelle, picking a bit up of ethnos. pieces, a little bit of Ethnos. It's a really, really clever game now. Beautiful because it has artwork from Manny. Mm -hmm. All of us walked away from that game pleasantly surprised by how much work they've done on it and how good it actually was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this new direction is brilliant. And sometimes that's what you have to do with the game design. Like, you have to yeah. really step back. Because it, what they had was, you know, it was okay, but mm -hmm. it's just, this is singing. Like, this is perfect. Yeah, yeah it was really good. I would say, I mean, I don't want to uh, compare it too much to Quacks, but it did feel like Quacks 2.0 yeah. or something better. It, it and more of a gamer's game, for it's sure. It's definitely a yeah. gamer game, but it has that fun uh, building aspect yeah. and the area control aspect is still there with these sort of like battlegrounds that you go through at the end, resolve at the end of each round. What about you, Kara? Uh, well, you've mentioned basically two of the <laughs> games that I was going to talk about because we were running around together most of the time. But um, we, we stopped over at the Yellow Booth and we saw a couple of really neat things. I'm always a sucker oh, for yeah. ninja games. And there yeah. was one and it had the little dojo was the box, which I just got tiny ninjas, which mm -hmm. the box is the dojo for that. And I... Haven't had a chance to play it, but that always intrigues me when they use everything that comes with the game. Um, but it, it's got a little... Do you what it was called? Ninja Academy, maybe? or <laughs> Something like that. Something yeah, along yeah. those lines. It had really cute art, and uh, it's, I think it's coming out at Gen Con, and there's, there's some of the challenges are dexterity. Yeah. Some of the challenges are something else. And it just, I don't know, it really caught my attention. A lot of stuff at their booth caught my attention. And I'm sorry that I'm forgetting Ishtar some of the names of it. Ishtar was one. Yeah, yeah. Ishtar, oh, that, that was the really one. Cool. Yeah. That's that the was going to be the other right? one. Yeah. That looked yeah. fantastic. Well, you also loved, fell in love with, uh, was it Quirky Circuits? Is that oh, what yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Quirky, um, yeah, Quirky Circuits. Um, I got to, like, stop for a second. And so we, we played Abomination. We played Quirky Circuits back yeah. to back um, with Plaid Hat. And the reason I love Quirky Circuits is because it's a programming game. It's got a little bit of this mind vibe thing going For on sure. with it. With uh, you, you're taking your programming, but you're you're having to play them down before the other players and hope that you're all on the same page because yeah, you don't really know what the movements. Yeah. yeah, it's cooperative mind style cooperative. Yeah. Yeah. And the, just the side note, cool thing about this, and I actually mentioned this on our live stream today because we were playing Tiny Epic Mex, which is also a programming game, but they're going to send them out to robotics clubs that's so cool. i yeah. think that's super neat because of what it does it also teaches the cooperation i coach robotics and so i immediately was thinking about taking it to my robotics club and that's what uh got her to tell me about that and it's just it was very cute and the coolest one of the coolest things and i think we posted a picture where you can see on our facebook the little the little miniatures will hold whatever pieces are pertinent to them in their particular yeah. thing so the puppy was obviously our favorite he sticks little tiles in his mouth. He's picking up little artifacts, Living and he moves around. around the board with them in his mouth. Mm -hmm. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty neat. Very cute game. What your eye? Well, so I got uh, one thing. I guess I'll sum it all up. Was the Calliope booth had a couple of really cool things this year, which you don't always think of Calliope with like gamers games, right? They right. make a lot of light mm -hmm. dice rolling, luck based games, but they had two that came out this year. Yeah. One of them was Spy Master, which was my number one most anticipated, and that sold out so quick. Really? What's crazy, um, I've read through the rules. I haven't played it yet. I was talking to Marcelo from Clypey Games, and he let me in on a little secret that he told me I could share, and that a across the box, the board, and the rule book, there are instructions on how to unlock an advanced mode. Oh, but cool. You, but no one has found it yet. It's a... Huh. He just said, look for clues across all those things. So if you're playing... No, I want the game. Well, right well, Ryan's got it, so we'll have to figure yeah. this out. Or he pulled cool. a huge joke on you. <laughs> or, he it, or on all of us. Right. He's okay. selling more copies. Okay. And then they had Ship Shape yeah. from Rob yeah. Davio, which I saw this on the anticipated list, but I didn't catch Rob Davio's name. And honestly, it's not the best cover, so I, I might have skipped no. past it um, from that. But once I knew it was Rob, I had to try it. And it's fun. It's a yeah. cool little game. You're stacking these hold tiles, and they're all different shapes. So that when you're looking down into your pirate hold, you can only see so many things. Mm -hmm. And by the end of the game, only the stuff you can see scores. So you have to really it puzzle. Is, 
It, it's very unique. Jeremy and I just reviewed that. I don't know if it's up right now as you watch this, but right. we are going to have a review, if we don't already, of that game on the channel. And it is some of the most unique components that I've ever seen. Like yeah. we were talking, there's a lot of games out now that have really wild things going on where they're using the box. Mm -hmm. This is a really unique thing where you're looking down, and thematically it's a pirate's hold, so it's kind of cool that you're looking down on these well, stacks of things. It's uh, eight plus, right? So it's a family game. It's six. Ship six. shape? It's like oh, eight. No, age. no, it's eight. Oh, yeah. The yeah, age oh, yeah is you can play this with any group. It's definitely yeah, a family yeah. game, and you can play up to six. Yeah. Rewinding back to Mystery House, we actually saw the final box of that. Yeah. Oh, cool. You have a lot yeah, more information really to reveal neat. now. I mean, it's it's really, really cool. You're using an app, obviously, to progress the story. Uh, the box has obviously got these holes in them, but we saw the actual final prototype. Almost final. And it is so almost neat. final, yeah. Yeah, almost final. We were using flashlights to look yeah. through it, and when you look through it, you can kind of move the flashlight on the ceiling or down to see what you're looking at. And you could see treasure chest, you could see a door with a green lock on it, and you could tell the other players, and you unlock that door, you pull it up, and then you see something through there, and it's like this whole house that just kind of revolves and opens up and reveals things as you go. Yeah, I wish I wish they'd had the app there, because I, it, when it I was playing so it, cool. he was like, tell me what you see, and it was like, well, there's a painting, and he said, well, then you'd be able to tell the app there's a painting, and it shows you the painting. Right. Or there was a letter hmm. on a desk across the hall, and you could tell the app that you found the letter, and it would let you read the letter, and like that's super cool, I think. Yeah. Craney also had... um. Masters of Renaissance. Masters of the Renaissance. Lorenzo, Lorenzo card game. Yeah, Lorenzo and, card and barrage. game. Barrage. We got to see the final. Yeah, look so at barrage. a little bit more about Masters. It's a uh, it, again, it it's uses the same basic system as Lorenzo. However, it uses marbles, which is really mm -hmm. neat. You're pushing marbles across and pushing them off, right. putting them into a storage unit to build cards, and then those car those marbles go back into like a circular motion. So you're going to be be able to reuse them. It's just really, really different than Lorenzo. I don't think people are going to recognize. Uh, obviously, the correlation of the art looks the same because the same artist, but mm -hmm. the, the gameplay itself looks a little bit different. So mm -hmm. we were bouncing around late at night. Like I think I saw a couple of new party games that are catching on kind of quick. So like we're used to seeing like Times Up and things mm -hmm. like that a after the show cons or when all the industry folks are getting together. There were two specifically that I saw being played m multiple times, and one of them was Three Laws of Robotics from Floodgate Games. It's like a social deduction game where you're trying to figure out your identity, so it's a little different. Hmm. And you just kind of walked around, and I don't think you're supposed to stick them to your head, <laughs> but I just kept seeing people with cards stuck to their head, and I would realize, I mean, Rob and Christina were playing yeah. it with Ryan, I think, and uh, Isaac and everybody, and then I saw uh, the Drinking Meeples group uh, playing Finger Guns at High Noon, which is from Indie Boards and Cards, which is a really silly little party game uh, that I believe is came came out at at sure. Origins. And so a couple of just new little party games that might be we might be seeing in our rotation uh, after shows now, which is kind of fun just to shake it up from time Letter Jam up, also seemed to be really oh, popular. Yeah. I didn't yeah. get a chance to play it from CGE. Lots of people are playing that. And then I see Just One being played Oh everywhere. yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Just, One. just One still riding still off great. the wave from last yeah, year. I don't for think sure. Just One will ever replace Time's Up just because the player count, but Just One is so much fun. So it much fun. Yeah. Yeah. It is and you can get in and out of Just One pretty quickly. Right, exactly. Time's Up is, it can, you know, you can mm -hmm. play a lot of times up. It's kind of sad because like a couple of years ago the big hit was was Word Slam and now you just don't even see anybody no, playing Word Slam anymore. I got to play a game with Asmodee called Obscurio. Um, I'm yeah, not a cool. giant That's Mysterium. That's the Mysterium one, right? Yeah, I'm Ish. not a fan of Mysterium. I think the game is ruined by a bad ghost. This game has a mm -hmm. traitor. It's really interesting and you're uh, one of the traitors is going to see what the ghost, so to speak, in the original game sees, and they try to manipulate what they're showing the other players. Mm. So it brings in a traitor element to the game, and we played it twice, and I actually had a lot of fun playing this game. Much more fun than I've ever had playing Mysterium in the past. I think that's going to be huge at Gen Con this year. Well, that's one I'll actually try. I'm not a big Mysterium fan either. either. No. So it's exciting that you could get that experience without yeah, Mysterium. Yeah, I, I well, want to definitely play that. We picked up Undo. <coughs> Yeah, we did yeah. play Undo. And we played the first one. Did you That's solve it? That's an interesting game. That's a very <laughs> no. strange... You know, the initial, uh, the initial thought when you pick up that box, being a small box, it looks like Unlock and it looks like Exit. Mm -hmm. So you initially think that this has the same type of game. It's not puzzly, right? It's, it's, it's not a puzzle. It's like more of a time it's story, different. right? It's like a choose your own adventure? Between. Yeah. There's it's, no yeah. visual element to the game, which can be difficult for some people. You're reading cards and then trying to deduce how to keep this person alive. It's, I don't want to say it's not fun, but it's also very strenuous. Like it's a very hard game to deduce. There's yeah. a definite storyline that yeah. runs through the entire thing. 
and you're either going to make this person live happily ever after or you're going to just mess it up even worse and you're getting points at the end of the game which i personally never enjoy in games like i don't want to see how well i do against the chart in a yeah. book yeah. um but it's still the, the ride to get there is still yeah. pretty interesting and i think it was less about the points it's more about based on what you do in certain time in certain pieces of the timeline you are affecting it and so how much you affected are those points so that you can see at the end did you affect it enough in order to change the outcome mm -hmm. we of course did not i am i'm kind of i'm interested by it the story was cool it definitely went in a different direction than i thought i yeah. want to play another one and see how it feels and if is it's just really interesting how the different cards played in your different clues and the timeline. I, I'm still not sure how I feel about it. I, I am curious to play another one, though. Okay. Maybe. I've got two, two more little games. One that I played and that we bought. It was available at Origins. One that wasn't available at Origins and we just heard about it. Okay. The first one is Shobu. Again, we also have a review coming out on the channel very soon of this. This is an abstract game, sort of in the vein of Quarto or things like that. Wood. This actually uses actual rocks for your pieces. Oh, cool. Um, you guys haven't played it no. yet, right? No. Nope. Yeah, you'll have to play it. Jeremy and I played it a few times uh, again today. Uh, it is an abstract game where you're moving a rock and then moving another one of your rocks in the exact same direction, basically mirroring the move. The first rock you move can't make contact with another rock. The second one can. The object is to push all of your opponent's rocks off of one of the four boards that you're on. So it's this really, as you play it, you start to appreciate it more and more and the layers that it has, because it has a lot of layers. I would say, uh, as Corto is for sort of maybe checkers, and, and those games aren't alike, but in terms of weight, this is to chess. Because yeah. you're definitely sitting there really thinking about your moves. It gets really quiet this. when you're playing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. this yeah. is not a party game. You're not like, oh my god. Right. Um, but very fun game. The other game we heard about was I think Time Chase was that what it was called? Oh, yeah. renegade game. Yeah, yeah. This is a renegade game coming out. I think at Gen, Gen Con. Con. Yeah. It's been announced. It's from the designer of uh, Potemkin Empire. Uh, his name Jonathan, is his, yeah. Jonathan. Yeah, I'm. I'm going Woodward. Woodward. Yeah. I. You know me. I loved Potemkin, so I'm excited and, to see what comes next. Right, and this is a trick-taking game that has a time travel component. As you're taking tricks, Ooh. you're actually laying these tricks out huh. in a line. And then in this trick, I might do something and use time units, which is a currency, to travel back three tricks ago and then play a card there that then lets me take that trick. Or Jeremy and I could both travel back to that same one because I think that mechanism in the game, you're holding your time units out and then you reveal. And if you and I are going back to the same trick, we're both active in that trick. Yeah. Ryan might go back to another trick, win it. Kira might not go back. And she might be able to play another card on the current trick mm -hmm. and take it. So it adds mm -hmm. a really interesting layer to trick taking. That's probably going to be on one of our Gen Con most anticipated lists. Oh, I'll sure. definitely yeah. want to try it <laughs> as sure. soon as humanly it possible. Really good. Renegade was super busy too because oh, yeah. they had Bubble Tea, which was a little kids game. I, I haven't played it yet, but definitely picked cute, it up. Cute to components. Cute components. It's in a little shaker tin. It looks oh, like really? bubble tea. And uh, uh, Terry over there at Renegade was like, oh, you, you got to get this for play with the kids because she right. knows I play with my nieces and nephews and stuff. And so I'm looking forward to, to breaking that one out to play with my nieces. So Two games I'll mention. Uh, my final two. Uh, one, we j are literally fresh off of playing, yeah. and that's Abomination. Yeah. Uh, we played it, a demo of it, a brief demo of it at, at uh, Origins, and then we just played a full game of it here. It is a longer game than mm -hmm. what I expected. However, it is at four really, players at it, least. Yeah, at least at four players. It's a longer game. It took us about two and a half hours, almost three hours with a teach. Uh, it's a worker placement game. It's very even darker than what I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's like blood on the sidewalk, people's oh, yeah. nets, neck slip, whole jaws <laughs> falling off. Holes. It's it's a macabre <laughs> theme it is for sure. Super Murder. super dark. <laughs> um, but it's very interesting the way that the system works because there's story elements that I didn't realize the first time that you mm -hmm. play through the game, or the first time that I researched the game. Playing through it, there's rounds where you're going to be reading story. It's going to affect people at certain spots or at certain areas on you know building their their Frankenstein monster, uh, which I found really really unique. And the other one I want to mention. And I'll, I'll be the first to say this. Uh, we had the mashup meetup on Thursday night, mm -hmm. and I had a little bit too much to drink that <laughs> evening. And we ended up staying up super late, like 4 in the morning that night. And w I'm so sorry, Mike Young, to you, but we had Mike <laughs> Young introduce <laughs> us uh, to ERA at like 2.30 in the morning. Oh, he yeah. was so and we patient. Were all, and we were all pretty bad. 
and our experience wasn't the best because we were trying to learn the game as such. However, having said that, super cool. We sat down the next day or two days later and actually walked through the game. It number one, that game is just beautiful. Oh, like yeah. the components mm -hmm. in that game are awesome because you're building this 3D medieval village, but it's also super simple and super approachable. Yeah. And it's from uh, Matt Leacock, it's, right? Yep. The it's like a roll and write. Oh, yeah. It's like a roll and write, but with 3D pieces. Yes, yeah, so they call it it's a, a roll, roll and build. build. Roll and yeah, build. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very, very unique game. I think this one is going to be huge oh, at yeah. Gen Con. Really? We'll sell it real, really quick. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be plan B. Just, oh, this is a Eggert Spiel title. Yes, I believe is. so. Like mm -hmm. that's you know uh, kind of that heavier weight. It's a little more on the expensive side, but if you see that price and you balk at it, it's because there are so many plastic pieces. It's like a yeah. hundred and something ridiculous. Yeah, because yeah. you're actually oh. building out your little village and you're like protecting, them in, like protecting things. Yeah, battleship there's style. battleship style. Are you you're building these farms independently, or is it a communal it's thing? Independently. Oh, independently. Oh. And you have Every resources. Yeah. These little pegs that are tracking yeah. your resources, and then based on what you're rolling, it can affect other people, and you can take their resources wow. and. It's pretty, uh, yeah. pretty weird. Pretty cool. It's cool. an engine builder too. Yeah. Every building you build is giving you more dice to roll. Yep. So it's kind of like roll through the ages or roll through the galaxy, and you're building these dice, and each icon is triggering things. I mean, there's a lot going on. Yeah. But it's it was a Super lot of fun. fun. Uh, yeah, the last thing cool. I wanted to mention is just uh, you touched on it. The mashup meetup this year was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we had twice the space, a ton of people. Uh, it just went really well. There was some drinking going on, um, but. I don't think anyone got lots hurt or anything yeah. like lots that. Of fun. Lots bruise. of giveaways, Small lots bruise. of fun. Yeah, I yeah. got a bruise too, but <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure where. How'd that happen? Um, and then also the the awards. Yeah. Uh, we were lucky yeah. enough yeah, to host the awards cool. ceremony. Went really well on Saturday night. Uh, always fun to do that and be a part of that and see all the winners. I think uh, among all all the winners, Root was sort of the big one that took mm -hmm. away uh, board game of the year and and uh, yeah, game and of the year as well. Yeah. Well, also a lot of our fans came to the meetup, and I do want to say to the fans watching. Um, I heard a lot from people at Origins that watched our show. A lot of people were out at Origins buying games because they had seen our uh, recap or our preview video, which feels really cool from this end. So don't think that we don't notice. Like people oh, yeah. are out there listening yeah. to us and like taking our recommendations, and so like, that was a pretty good experience. So let us know if we were wrong. And, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, which, wrong. You know, sometimes we <laughs> so are. All right? those games Ryan pointed out said so this looks <laughs> awesome and it's awful. Sometimes they're not all hits, but that's email him privately. Well, and I want to say, and I'm, ho I'm assuming we'll put it up on the channel here really soon. But the video we did for the Origins Awards, it's all cool, that yeah. filming, all, so you guys don't know if you saw us buzzing around, it's because we're we're filming and editing mostly these guys are editing while we're there on site to put that video together for the award show and it'll come out uh, here in the next few days, hopefully. It was a really great video. I was really impressed with it. Yeah, so. plus it had some great footage that we got too at Gamma mm -hmm. of some of the Hall of Famers, mm -hmm. some of which, uh, it, it's always just amazing to meet those people and some of them had stories to tell us that we had no idea what they'd been involved with. Okay. So yeah. when we put that video up there, you should definitely go check yeah. it out. But until you do that, or until the next time we have a chit chat, yeah. we will see you then. Well, that's another episode of Chit Chat in the Bag. Thanks for watching. If you want to check out another one, there's probably one right over here in the bottom left hand corner, or probably your right hand corner. Whatever corner, we have something to click on. So click on one of these things, and good things will happen.